In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate the factorial of a number using recursion with C. So the factorial of a non-negative integer n is the product of all non-negative integers less than or equal to n. That means that 3 factorial is going to be 3 times 2 times 1, which is going to be 6. 5 factorial is 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1, which is going to be 120. 8 factorial is going to be the product of all the integers between 8 and 1, and we get 40,320. In general, we could say that the factorial of n is going to be n times n minus 1 times n minus 2, all the way down to times 2 times 1. Let's implement a recursive algorithm to calculate the factorial of a non-negative integer now, a recursive solution is going to involve using a function that calls itself. We'll call our function factorial. And the function is going to return an int, which is going to be the calculated factorial. The function is going to accept as an argument an int, the int n. We can copy this and provide a definition for the function down here. Now, the way we're going to solve this problem is by having factorial call itself with a smaller version of the same problem, which is computing the factorial of a number. And in general, that's how recursive functions will solve a problem. They'll call themselves with a smaller version of the same problem. We call that step a recursive step or a recursive case. Now eventually, the function needs to stop calling itself. We call that case the base case or the base step. So if we look at how a factorial is computed, we want to multiply n by n minus 1 by n minus 2. And we want to stop this process once we reach 1. So what we'll do is check if n is equal to 1. And if it is, we're going to return 1. So we'll have here return 1. And this here is the base case in our recursive algorithm. This is where recursion is going to stop. Now notably, the factorial of 1 is 1. So the factorial of 1 should return 1. And that makes sense because the only non-negative integer less than or equal to 1 is 1 itself. Now the factorial of 2 should be 2 times 1. And the factorial of 3 is 3 times 2 times 1, and the factorial of 4 is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now notice that the factorial of a number is that number multiplied by the previous number's factorial. So 4 here is really 4 times factorial 3, because factorial 3 is just 3 times 2 times 1. So if we had this here instead, we should get the same result. Now, we know the factorial of 1. We know that it's 1. So we know that the factorial of 2 is going to be 2 times factorial 1. And now we know the factorial of 2 using our solution for factorial 1. So now we know factorial 2 is 2 times factorial 1. Factorial 3 is going to be 3 times factorial 2, and so on, with factorial 4 being 4 times factorial 3. So now we have this recursive technique to calculate the factorial of a number. So we can now implement the recursive step of our algorithm. We can have here that if n is not equal to 1, we're going to return that number multiplied by factorial of 1 less than that number. And this will be able to now calculate the factorial of a number n. So for example, if we did have the factorial of 4, this is going to give us 4 times the factorial of n minus 1, which is going to be 4 minus 1, which is going to be 3. And now we have exactly this situation here, because factorial 3 is going to give us 3 times the factorial of 3 minus 1. So we're going to have 3 times 
factorial of 3 minus 1, which is going to be 2. And then here, we're going to have this situation. The factorial of 2 is going to be 2 times the factorial of 2 minus 1, which is going to be 1. And this is where the recursion is going to stop, because the factorial of 1 is going to be 1. And so we'll have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Let's test this function out now. Up here, we'll call it. We'll have printf factorial of, let's say, 5 is equal to percent %d backslash n, and we'll call the function with the argument 5. We can save, compile, and run our program, and we get that the factorial of 5 is 120, which is correct. We can try to calculate the factorial of all the numbers between 1 and 10. We could have 4 int i is equal to 1, i is less than or equal to 10, i++. Plus plus. And this loop here is going to take i from 1 to 10 by 1. Then here, we'll output the factorial of percent %d. And we'll output i here. So i is going to go from 1 to 10 by 1. And each time, we're going to output i as well as the return value of the factorial function when it's called with i as an argument. So again, if we save, compile, and run our program, we see the results when factorial is called with the numbers from 1 to 10. And if we check down here, we can see these results match the actual results expected for the factorial of these numbers. We can see that even in the case of the factorial of 10, we do get the correct result here. Now notice that the factorial numbers get very large very quickly. So the factorial of 4 was only 24, but the factorial of 10 is 3,628,800. What happens if we try to calculate the factorial of the first 20 non-negative integers? So we'll save, compile, and run our program. And look at this. Somehow we're getting negative numbers as output here. Let's scroll down here. We can see that up until about the factorial of 12, everything seems okay. So the factorial of 12 here, we got this number here with 479 and then 001600, and that matches the expected result. But look at the factorial of 13. We expect this number here with 6227 at the start, but instead we get this number here. So what's going on is that the int variable can only store numbers of a certain range. And as these numbers get larger and larger, we can't successfully store them using an int variable. Now there's another type we can use, size underscore t. The size underscore t type can store a greater range of non-negative integers than int. So what we could do is instead of using int, we could try to use size underscore t. Up here we'll have size underscore t and size underscore t and then size underscore t and size underscore t. Here we'll have size underscore t for our argument. And then we'll have percent %zu here and percent %zu here, which allow us to output greater ranges of non-negative integers. So we can save, compile, and run our program now. And notice this, the results seem more accurate. So if we scroll down, we'll see here that the factorial of 13 is now correct. We see that the expected result matches the function output here. In fact, it's even accurate all the way down to the factorial of 20. We get this number here with 24329 and so on, and we get 24329 and so on. Let's try to take it up to 30 now. So we'll have 30 here. If we save, compile, and run our program, 
we're going to see it breaks down again. So let's scroll down here again. And the factorial of 21 is supposed to be this number here with 510909. And we get this, 14197, and so on. So even when using the size underscore t type, our function can't calculate the factorial of integers greater than 20. Now there is a technique that's often called big integer calculations that can be used to calculate the factorial of larger numbers. We could also calculate the factorial using imperative code, which uses loops instead of recursion. I'll post videos covering those solutions in the description of this video. So this is how we can calculate the factorial of a number using recursion in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.